Thank you for downloading the Bloke Busters podcast. My name is Paul. And I'm Brian. And today we're going to be introducing ourselves a little bit, talking about how it is that we got here, what piqued our interest in films, and also talking a little bit about the films from around that time that we started to get into it. Well, I will go first. Sounds like a plan. Uh, yeah. I grew up in England, and I've been in England for almost all my life. So I first only really saw film at the cinema, the big Hollywood films that would come over. Um, I was, however, lucky enough that my parents had a fairly extensive VHS library (laughs) of some of the older films like The Usual Suspects. Um, The only time I've ever seen L.A. Confidential was when I was about 10. Oh, that's a perfect movie for a (laughs) 10-year-old. Oh, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Nothing heavy at all in that. No, nothing at all. (laughs) But yeah, so I had a bit of an eclectic... (laughs) Um, yes. film history growing up you know, got into Monty Python because uh, I think the Holy Grail was on TV <laughs> and asked, the only time I've ever fallen on the floor laughing I think was uh, during that film but yeah so gr- growing up I was just seeing the films coming out and over time realising that there was a lot to the films that I was really liking um, the the look of some films I found really good they're science fiction I took a real shine to as well. Um, and so I eventually ended up taking a course in film studies at what we call college, but would have been the last two years of high school. And during that, it really dawned on me that film was what I was really interested in. It ended in me taking a university course in film, much to my wife's chagrin. <laughs> <laughs> and... Just going through that and really seeing all of the background of film, the early cinema, just really cemented in my head that film is one of the great things of our time. And uh, hopefully Hollywood starts waking up and making more of the good titles. Yeah, good. <laughs> Back to more to the art of it than yeah. less of the business yeah, <laughs> side of it. But I'm sure that there will be plenty of indie films and, uh, well, yeah, that's, and uh, old filmmakers going back to mm-hmm. their favorite style of films. And should be plenty to keep us interested. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, yeah, if I can interrupt for a second. That's one of the great t- things about living in these times is the digital age. All the outlets there are for your art, there's tons of access for us yeah it, it, you don't have to play on a huge amount of screens to be known there to get to, you know yeah. it, if you seek it you can find it pretty yeah. much <laughs> so I, I, I can't complain too much about the business right now being kind of crap right it, it is but that's mostly mainstream <laughs> you know but uh the good stuff's out there you oh, just yeah. gotta look yeah if, uh, if you have before, the will or you yeah it was whatever just played in the big multiplexes and that's all you you were ever ever gonna see <laughs> yeah and, and now if you have the will then you will find something there yeah. will be enough out there to keep you going <laughs> all right so well, what would your background be my background uh, also uh, my first love of film i'd say probably started uh sometime around the age of 10 to 12 never really remember going to the theater uh before then uh, just wasn't something my parents were interested in right my siblings are all older than me and had their own things going on, didn't want to take Little Brother, you know, yeah. really too much to the movies. But like yours, uh, we had an extensive tape collection, VHS uh, collection from modern listeners. Those are these reels, <laughs> <laughs> giant plastic yes, <laughs> reel in there. You, you really yeah. have no idea how lucky you have it right now. Yes. <laughs> Something you had to do called fast forward and rewind, not yeah. skip. But, yes. uh, yeah, we would have these free HBO weekends or free, you know, whatever. And it'd right. have, like, the the phone number at the bottom. You know, you call this, you get the subscription. But, you will, you know, 48 hours of, you know, movies or whatever. Oh, not, tell, cool. not telling you that, you know, that's the only movies they play for two months at a time or three <laughs> yeah. months at a time. But, you know, so all of our movies would have, like, a phone number appearing, <laughs> like, all over. But that's how we watched them and just had them labeled. And so that was, you know, I just loved the... The stories. I just, you know, not that I, I, I didn't have a rough childhood by any means, but I loved escaping into that world. Right. And who doesn't? Uh, exactly. But yeah, I was going to say, I was probably about, uh, so that was just my love of film. And until I was about 12, I went to see The Lion King in the theater. I remember that was 
I mean, that was perfect for my age. It yeah. was it was just just a great movie, in my opinion. Yeah. I think it still holds up at, at the age of thirty. I am now. I still think it's a well told story. Oh yeah. Uh, even though if it it is a somewhat rip off of Hamlet, is it not? I, I believe. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. But uh... well, there is that great issue that uh, there are apparently only. I believe seven original stories <laughs> and everything. Yeah, yeah storytelling. Yeah. Something to rip that. off of everything. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but anyway, that's you know, and I saw that, and I saw Nightmare Before Christmas in the theater, and I wish I, I could have done that. I just <laughs> loved the imagination. I love the collaborative process of film. I don't know. To me, it's just as perfect an art form as you can get, in my yeah. opinion. <laughs> uh, so that's kind of where I come from. I uh, thought uh, or entertained the idea of film school. It's nothing I've ever obviously haven't gone through with yet right. i don't know if i want to do it in a professional capacity but i uh like we were discussing prior to this i do need to be involved in it somehow whether that that's just <laughs> loving it but i think about film every day yeah. <laughs> i think looking forward to new ones looking forward to re-watching old ones and that's just something like my uh, roommate just doesn't understand you know it's like oh watch a movie and throw it away you yeah. know or do, why buy why collect why watch again because there's always something for me to find again yeah um <laughs> That's a little bit of my history with film. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. It it really does make you realize sometimes that there is a world of people that like <coughs> film. Thank you, Lala. Uh, <laughs> the world has spoken. <laughs> rabble, uh, rabble, rabble, rabble. <laughs> so yes, the world of people that like film, and then you've got the people who are just the casual observers who don't get the reason why there are special features on DVDs, why there's... Yes. So, why would someone want to listen to the maker of the movie talk for the length of the movie? I know. <laughs> no one would ever be interested in uh, knowing how a film got made. No, no, My no, goodness. No. So, yeah. <laughs> and it, I've always been proud to be part of that and my mother actually was the one who also a big film fan she would go to the British Film Institute um, up in London fairly often see old films up on the screen there and she always would try and get me interested in some of those as well um, I unfortunately have never had the chance to go up to London to do it but maybe one day <laughs> well now I think we'll talk a little bit about a couple of films that really got us into the film industry and really wanting to keep up with all of these films and actors and uh, seeing what's coming out. Do you want to go first or should I? Uh, I'll defer to the Englishman. Oh, well, <laughs> thank you very much, sir. <laughs> As I didn't say in my intro, I am American. Even though we are both blokes, technically. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm an American bloke. Yeah. He's a bloke bloke. Uh, yes. <laughs> so anyway, go ahead. All right. Well, the film that I'm going to be talking about is The Road to Perdition. And this was from 2002, directed by Sam Mendes, and brought out by 20th Century Fox and DreamWorks. It was a film that I got to see during the film studies course in college. And it was the film that, as I was watching, it was the first film I'd seen, and maybe I'd matured enough at that point to be able to realise that I found that this film was just a beautiful-looking film. It was... Uh, Possibly what started for me realising that the look of a film is as important as the story, at the very least for myself. To some. Yes. <laughs> I, I'm yeah. weighted... Uh, yeah, go ahead. I'm weighted uh, towards story. Right, well, yeah. yes. I mean, story is also important. And without a good story, <laughs> yeah. a good-looking film can still fall flat on its face. Yes. But luckily, this film has a very good story. Starring Tom Hanks as Michael Sullivan Sr., and starring Paul Newman in his last actual on-screen appearance in a film as a mob boss, John Rooney, who sees Michael <coughs> Sullivan as almost a surrogate son, despite the fact that he actually has a son called Connor, played by Daniel Craig. And oh, yes. Yes, when, yeah. I, when I looked this up again, I was like, wow, Daniel Craig's in this film. I'd completely <laughs> forgotten that. And he is, as I said, uh, John Rooney's son, uh, a little bit unstable and just a little bit jealous of Mr. Sullivan Sr. Also uh, starring Jude Law as a man called Harlan Maguire, who is a crime scene photographer who also happens to be a professional assassin. 
normally ends up photographing his own kills, as a matter of fact, but... Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, Neither here nor there. coming back to me. <laughs> and so the basic plot is that Michael Sullivan ends up having to kill a fairly large number of people at a meeting because Connor kills the head of the group of people at the meeting basically because he gets a little bit hot-headed and just shoots them. And so Michael Sullivan, it sort of becomes, uh, well, I've now got to kill these people before they kill me, so he mows them down. Unfortunately, his son has sneaked aboard the car and has now just witnessed this. And so Michael Sullivan Sr. basically takes Michael Sullivan Jr. aside and makes him swear, you will not mention this to anyone. Period. Pinky swear. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> the most sacred of all swears. And so he swears, they go on their way. Connor, however, thinks he's going to tell. And so despite John Rooney's assertion that, yes, I believe Michael Sullivan Sr., in that his son will honour this, will not say anything, and even tries to get an apology out of Connor. Connor's having none of it, of course. Um, Connor then kills Michael's wife and other son believing it to be the Michael Sullivan Jr which then basically leads to the two Michaels going on a road trip to Perdition which is a town on the shore of Lake Michigan but why did they call it Road to Perdition? Hmm. <laughs> uh, I just am curious yeah, I, I don't know <laughs> okay, actually sorry to interrupt your thought there but, yeah. you know. I'll never get to movie titles. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm, yeah. Sure, I'm sure we'll figure it out. <laughs> we'll discuss that more when I get to my titles. Yes, yes, well. yes, of course. All right. So they're on their way there, basically just to try and get away. But um, this is where Jude's law character comes in. Connor pretty much enlists him to track down and kill them, just to make sure that there's absolutely no more witnesses, which is what he seems that obsessed about anyone mm. anyone that might be a witness to anything he kills or arranges the <laughs> killing yes. so yes and jude law i think possibly one of my favorite roles of his is in this film as this assassin he, there is one scene in particular where it's just tom hanks at one table in a diner and jude law at another table in a diner and unless you're very quick at the beginning you don't realize they're at two tables it really looks like they're sitting opposite each other having this conversation ah i remember that scene yeah, now. yeah. where of course jude law knows who michael sullivan is and michael sullivan doesn't know who jude law is but does work it out <laughs> through the conversation you see in his eyes this man is here to kill me <laughs> and it's the look oh, of the film the, the, the diner is that what you said yes, okay the and diner. then he leaves out the it, they leave out the back yeah or something, yeah, something like that. yeah. yeah it, it's such a fantastic scene i thought just watching it it was it was one of the best scenes i would seen in a film to date at that point just because it was a simple conversation there wasn't even any actual dialogue by itself that was like, you know, action packed dialogue like on the edge of it wasn't on the edge of your seat in what they were saying. It was you're on the edge of your seat because you realise along with Tom Hanks, like, how am I gonna get out of this? How is this going to go down with me walking out alive? And it's really no surprise to me that this film not only won an Oscar for cinematography but also two BAFTAs for cinematography and production design. <laughs> this film just looks amazing. It's... Um, I do remember it looking. Yeah, I mean, yeah, there are yeah, a couple incredible. of scenes, especially, I would actually say, scenes in the rain in this film are just framed so beautifully in some of the shots. I mean, even at the beginning, you see Tom Hanks' character from very far away and through somewhat cloudy glass and stuff because it's supposed to be you're seeing him as his son is seeing him it's very distant he doesn't really know everything about his father and you could say this film is actually a film about the son rather than about the two of them just because of how some of the film is shot and of the journey that they had to make together but the journey that the boy has to make in coming to the realization of what is happening and growing as a person 
with his son, uh, with his father. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> yes. The son doesn't have a son. That's, uh, <laughs> not, no, yet. No, not yet. I mean, I was actually surprised to find out today that it was a comic book film, technically coming from the graphic novel of the same name. But then thinking about it, it doesn't surprise me <laughs> that much anymore because of how beautiful the film was. They clearly drew a lot of inspiration from some of the pages and they must have set up some of the shots to mirror the comic book. And it really is such a fantastic film to watch. Just sitting there, you can lose yourself in some of the set design because it's a Great Depression era Irish mob story. And... Then you've just got these characters, these two characters trying to get away and just get to a a new life. And the other characters just trying to get them. And it really, it really holds up now. And it, it's just a great thriller. Suspense is always there. I'm not going to spoil the ending because I think anyone that hasn't seen it has to go and see this film and I will not say the ending. (laughs) I'm glad you said that because I was going to say something on well, that. But... <laughs> I mean, I, it's one of those films that I will not spoil the ending for people because I want them to see it. Even if they may not appreciate it as much as I did watching the film, it's, it's still yeah. I, I still think it's a great film for people to see without knowing <laughs> the ending. But yeah, and the, the only other thing I would say about it is the budget. Like 2002, the budget was $81 million. Quite a large budget for back then. Not necessarily now, but it's quite a lot of budget for back then. And it made $181 million at the box office alone. Not bad. Yeah. And again, that does not surprise me. Poultry cause... Tom Hanks dollars, though, oh, I gotta yeah. say. Come on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Tom Hanks yeah. has got to break 200 Yeah. Not... I mean, surely the number one draw was Tom Hanks, but... I'm sure after that, word of mouth must have got mm-hmm. this film yes. going. Well, in the uh, 75 and above, you know, they were going for Newman, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and everyone true. else is like, who the hell is Paul Newman? <laughs> uh, unfortunately. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, would you like my opinion real quick on this, sir? I would, or would, yes. Okay. Um, sure. I am one of those people that not, did not love the movie as much as yourself. I well, certainly agree that it looked fantastic. Yeah. And <laughs> I have just seen the Depression era mob story done enough right. I think and I think it had all the ingredients for a great movie I think it had like looked great the, the story was good I enjoyed yeah. the story and uh, you had amazing performances I believe on the most part yeah. something that I've never been able to pinpoint and, and I own the film so obviously I was willing to spend money on it yeah uh, <laughs> just something I've never been able to actually pinpoint felt slightly flat for me with it I don't know right. if it was just drug in places or i know one part and I, it's the ending i'm not spoiling anything here by okay. saying i hate rain being used as a suspense builder or a you know you know what i'm talking right. about yeah, I, I, like I oh see. it's raining it must be dramatic yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. know like that like that scene wouldn't play as well without the rain um well without you know, like, without going too much into <laughs> it from my point of view yeah. i didn't necessarily see it as it had to happen during the rain because that would build suspense. But, but, I, I saw yeah. it used more as, again, a beautiful backdrop and it, it worked into the color scheme of the film at that point. But also there is, and I'm trying... The color scheme being gray and brown. Yes, very much. <laughs> uh, very colorful. I'm trying not to spoil this scene here. No, no, no. But, we can take out whatever, yes. Yeah, but there is, I would say... A definite reason for it being raining because the idea is that one of the characters is hidden enough by True, said rain that that he mm. is not seen until towards the end. Yes, mm-hmm. um, but it, I it's I don't know. It's just one of those button pressers to me. You know, there are right. certain things in film that <laughs> press your buttons, and it's a such a Hollywood cliche for me. Yeah, the the rainy rain. dialogue scene. You know, um, right? Or, oh, yeah, you know, it's, but yeah. that being said, I still liked it. I think more than most. I, I don't know. Like you, you gave the numbers there, but critically, I don't. I remember it being kind of mixed. There were yeah. That, if I remember, it, yeah, it was that, like ten there years were, ago. But. Based on what I can remember and what I looked up, there were praises for the acting in the film. Everyone was seen to have done a very good job. Especially, I would say the the son. It was his first role actually Tyler 
Hochlin, I'm probably butchering that. <laughs> And he's not really been in anything else that I've seen, but he did a very good job, especially considering it was his first film role. I would not have guessed that from the acting he put into that. But yeah, everyone was praised for their acting in the film, and obviously that look at the film must have got some acclaim <laughs> since it won an Oscar and two BAFTAs. <laughs> yes. But uh, yeah, I think apart from that, probably it came out at the same time, as you said, as other... Depression era film, mobster films. So yeah, people, but... people were probably starting to get off it, which you know you see trends in Hollywood where there's a lot of cowboy film followed by no cowboy film for a while, <laughs> and I think this was coming on the back end of that. I think yeah, I think uh, a lot of the population might have been tired of that already. Yeah, you know, yeah. Because uh... as you said, for a Tom Hanks film, 181 million dollars, <laughs> especially in 2002 does seem a little bit low. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as, as, yeah, playing all over the country and, yeah. But anyway. But, and, yeah, anyway, I, I still give it, you know, going by Cisco and Ebert's standards, I, thumbs up, you know, still right, yeah. in my mind. Uh, and I would say, um, solely for myself, using our particular scoring method, <laughs> oh, yeah. I would actually give this film probably minus, I'll, I'll go to 0. 0.5, minus 0. 0.5, um, because that's zero, folks. Yeah. <laughs> we Americans, we would say zero. Okay. Just translate. Okay, zero point five. <laughs> if you must get yes, that technical. I must. Oh, I must. Well, they must. might be confused. <laughs> Uh, so minus point five. Yes, I, mean, I will not go to minus one just okay. because of how much I like the film, and I would I would still say the story and the setting. I normally hate the old style mobster film for some reason. That era, that uh, particular sort of Irish mobster or even Italian mobster thing, mm. I can't get into. But this film, which to me almost seemed like that was just what's going on in the background, the film is about the father and the son and then trying to get away from this force that is just continually coming after them. And it's like, for me, that's what that film is about and that's why I got so attached to it mm-hmm. as I did. For you, I would assume, given that, as you said, not yeah. your... <laughs> not uh, yeah, exactly. if you would, yeah, my rating, I would put it at about a minus four, about yeah. for me. Okay. Minus, yeah, but right around, yeah, minus four. I mean, that's... So yeah, I think it, good, enough, on the side yeah. of good. Oh, yeah, you know? still good. Enough, yeah. there, enough there that there's just some stuff not really clicking with you and... yeah you know, like i said obviously i owned it it's you know i get a little tired of the long coats and the tommy guns right mm-hmm. and the, you know that there's none of that you know black and white film area where they're you know seeing you know that you know and listen here <laughs> no, you know, yeah. yeah there's none of that stuff which <laughs> thankfully you know that's had been so played out so yeah like i said something fell short but still over and all yeah. a, a decent film and i mean well i would say definitely the reason it doesn't go down to one for me is the ending of the film is one of those endings that you don't see a lot, especially in like proper Hollywood films. So like seeing that for me, that was a refreshing taste on it, and something I hadn't seen really in well even the films that I'd seen growing up. It was uh, a little bit more down yeah. than you know, yeah. other films. And so. I will say uh, one maybe one last thing. I know we, <laughs> I was really intrigued. I think as many people were about pairing, even though they, I guess, aren't. I don't know if they were considered the top two build. Where, was it Hanks and Newman? Uh, Hanks and Newman, yes. Okay, the top two. Right even okay, so uh, the pairing of those two, kind of the old generation and the new, kind of like icon, both icons of their acting group. Yeah. You know, the, the, of their times to see them together, I uh, was really, really fascinated by. You know, yeah. uh, just kind of Tom Hanks, of America's kind of sweetheart, if you will. Yeah. And Newman, you know, from just those films in the 60s and 70s. Zadie's work was kind of, uh, yeah. But uh, <laughs> I love seeing them together. It's, yeah, uh, very Sometimes good. those things work out well. Sometimes, sometimes they always work out well on paper. Yeah. And then you get a movie like, what was that piece of crap with Pacino and... De Niro, even though those are from the same time, <laughs> yeah. I, don't, I forget what I even forgot what the hell the thing was called. But yeah, I should, did not I work should off be long. able. To, <laughs> I should know, but I don't. <laughs> Plug it in later. All right. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, anything else on yours? Um, I don't want to no, cut you off there. No, I mean um, I think that probably the most I can talk about it before everyone would switch off. So. <laughs> <laughs> assuming, <laughs> assuming they haven't already. <laughs> not saying anything to do with you, yeah. but just us in general. 
uh, throwing myself under the bus there, too. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and, All right, so, well, so what about you? Well, I guess I will uh, stick with America's Sweetheart, right. Tom Hanks, yeah. <laughs> and go with a little 1995 film called Apollo 13. Apollo 13. Yes. <laughs> I recall something like that. One of those mysteriously titled films that have nothing to do <laughs> with, the, with the film itself. No. But, uh, yeah, it, kind of in honor of Neil Armstrong's recent passing. Um, but, yeah, like I said, it was 1995, directed by Ron Howard uh, through Imagine Entertainment, written by, or the screenplay written by William Broyers Jr. and Al Reinhardt. It was actually based off of a book written by Jim Lovell and Jeffrey uh, Kluger called uh, Lost Moon, The Perilous Voyage of Apollo 13. Uh, any readers out there, fantastic read. Oh, I had to pick that up. Yes, it is. It is. I mean... Obviously a different experience than the film, but yeah, very, very, very good. But the events obviously took place in 1970, and uh, real quick, if you don't know, it's the uh, <laughs> Apollo 11 was, of course, the moon landing in 1969. This takes place in 1970, it's Apollo 13, and at this point, there's only two missions later, and yeah. America is kind of blasé with space travel already. It's... Uh, just routine, kind of, kind of viewed by America. Yeah, the, uh, the very routine. odd phenomena that <laughs> the first of something is just out there, and, oh my god, and then the second of something is just like, yeah, we can do it again, and then everything after that just becomes, oh, all right. Yeah. So, what's so, for dinner? <laughs> so yeah, they, I think they say something like three million fewer viewers. I think they say in the film watched the launch or whatever then had the Apollo 11 but obviously not Apollo 11 monumental but yeah uh, <laughs> you're not beating those numbers probably but, uh, not no. <laughs> no but what makes it <laughs> interesting or what uh, fascinates Americans is that I believe three days out maybe two or three days out they uh, have an explosion after um, Kevin Bacon's uh, I shouldn't say character play his portrayal the of utter Swigert bastard that is Kevin Bacon <laughs> yes ruining this yes. otherwise perfectly fine yes. trip yeah, he is asked by Houston to stir the cryo tanks, the oxygen, and uh, there is an explosion, and that sets a chain of events that pulls together thousands of people at NASA and Houston, uh, the Houston uh, base to get these men home alive. This is no longer about a lunar landing; it's about saving these pioneers, yeah. um, these modern day explorers, uh, yeah. to get them home safely. They've never lost anyone in space. Yeah. Um, in space being in space. Yeah, in space, yes. They've lost people on the landings, uh, the Gemini program and all that, but uh, yeah, never lost a man in space. And yeah. It captivated the world. It, it was interesting. Uh, my parents are old enough that they remember this, and so I could talk to them about that. Right. Because this film came out when I was 13, so I saw it at a very impressionable age. And I'm sure they and, told you when you were watching it, oh, we saw this. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> this was our life. Like, this, yeah, it captivated us, it captivated everyone. There's, you know, just everyone just watching their televisions and uh, listening to the radio, seeing what was going to happen. It was a drama that united a lot of yeah. people, uh, much in the way that uh, other dramas of our day have. Uh, but the, one of the things I love about this film, it's a perfect combination for me of a lot of my loves. Uh, film being the primary space exploration. I'm a huge fan of space exploration and just the universe in general. That mm -hmm. search of knowledge, the uh, yeah. trying, you know, just exploring and, you know, like the the History Channel series, the universe, can't get enough of watching that stuff. But right. uh, I just always have been interested in that. And then uh, history in general. I am a huge history buff as well. <laughs> so it's just, it has all that going for it, that historical drama. And one of the problems, if you're making a historical drama, is how do you make it suspenseful to your audience that largely knows the outcome of the film? Yeah. <laughs> uh, how do you just keep like, you know, and I'm not lumping Titanic in there. That's a no. piece of crap love story. Yeah. Sorry I, to anyone that loves that. <laughs> I know you love Yeah. yeah my cup, my heart will go on, <laughs> but no thanks to that film. Well, I would actually, <laughs> I was thinking of saying uh, along the same lines as Apollo 13, sort of, um, The Dish. Have you seen it? I have not. No. I would definitely recommend it. <laughs> a great Sam Neill film. Um, and it's basically about... Um, the people in Australia who are manning the dish who suddenly find themselves in a the position of they will be broadcasting the Apollo 11 landing. <laughs> it's right. uh, like, you know, oh no, we'll be fine, we're just covering everything. And then all of a sudden, their satellite's down, we're in charge. We're like, you know, what's going to happen? Of course, everyone knows what's going to happen because it happened, it was the most iconic 
uh, moment in um, the history of mankind. Yeah, so it's another one of those things of like, you know, well, it's suspenseful. That one, they actually went more along sort of a slightly comical and sort of the, the daily lives of the people that are running it. Mm. But yeah, another another one where it's like, well, we know what's going to happen, mm-hmm. but we're building it up anyway. But perhaps a nicer way of me say, discussing Titanic is that film didn't really center... It wasn't centered on the tragedy of no. Titanic. It wasn't, you know, I wouldn't call it a historical drama. It was... No. It was uh, a like where, yeah, yeah, it was a love story set against that yeah. time, much in the way Pearl Harbor bleh, was. <laughs> Never seen it, not going to. <laughs> oh, but you must. Yo, come on, Affleck. Turns yeah. out a hell of a... Yeah, thank uh, you for directing now, Affleck. You found your bread and butter, <laughs> stick with it. But yeah, it was like, you know, that I think was a real shame uh, to at least my grandfather's and his generation to call a movie Pearl Harbor and turn out that piece of shit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that was just this ridiculous love triangle and there's like 20 minutes of the attack. But, uh, oh, really? Yeah. I, that, I it, didn't it, know. It, no, it, it, that, don't quote me on that, but it, it's far, yeah. a, a minimal part of the film. Yeah, to be called and, Pearl Harbor and then yeah. be about something mm-hmm. else. Yeah, yeah, I mean, go see or uh, Rent or get on demand Tora 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 if you want a real... Pearl Harbor film. That yeah, I, one is incredible. I, but, uh, <laughs> I have heard good things about it. Yes, but actually has the Japanese speaking in Japanese. Oh my god! Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, but uh, correct me if I'm wrong. If they did that in Pearl Harbor, I've forgotten, but <laughs> I doubt it. But anyway, yeah. like I was saying, you know the outcome. So how do you keep your viewer interested? And they just do a great job. Sure, there's some artistic license taken in it, but the events themselves were dramatic. Yeah. And it, they would. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I mean, uh, and just to put yourself in the shoes, like it's so difficult for me to imagine even being in space, and then faced with the possibility of staying in yeah. space <laughs> and dying in yeah, space, yeah, spending the rest of your uh, life in space, no matter how long or short that could be. Yeah. But yeah, just the the teamwork of everyone to get them home, and it's it's just well done by Ron Howard and William Broyles Jr. and Al Reinhardt, those writers, and uh, obviously expertly performed I believe uh, Tom Hanks's second Academy Award sound and, uh, yeah. and I think, I think uh, right after Force Gump I think Force Gump preceded yeah Force Gump then, was yes, before I know it was nominated for Best Picture I don't know what won that year but yeah it cost 52 million and these are Tom Hanks numbers 355 million there we office. go there we go <laughs> that is a blockbuster yeah <laughs> very much so yeah especially for that time I mean <laughs> 1995, yeah, 95 Those numbers in 95. Yeah, that's 17 years ago, <laughs> and that's 355 million. Well, let's assume that's worldwide. I don't know. Um, no, normally, <laughs> the reported ones online, yes, yeah, it's, it's, yeah. it's total gross. Yeah. But, yeah, I would think a large portion of that would be. <laughs> yeah, America. almost certainly. Not, not, not many in Cambodia, probably watching Yeah, that, but probably not. Sorry to point them out. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to alienate as few people as possible. Oh, yeah. so. <laughs> oh well, don't, don't worry about those Cambodians. As yeah, you said, like, they'll Rob, never hear this. Callback, especially Robins in oh, yeah. Cambodia. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that one Robin in Cambodia. Yes. Uh, this will get to him. I will make sure this gets to a Robin in Cambodia. <laughs> All right. But, uh, yes, that was really one of the films that started me off. I was just captivated. Yeah. you know, and, and I watched it this morning, and I can't tell you... Like, you know, meeting you is like someone else who gets it. Uh, yeah. That I have watched that film so many times, and people are like, why watch it that many times? Because I'm always interested in it. Along with those handful of movies, like if you see on TV or something, no matter what point it is, you're. Yeah. I guess I'm not grocery shopping. I guess yeah. I'm not going to work. Yeah. <laughs> I'm well, watching the end of this film. Yeah. You I, know? I would say, um, for me, without going too much into it, it's my favorite film of all time, Shawshank Redemption. No matter if it's on, or sometimes I will just sit down and watch it. And it's I've had someone say to me before, like, "Why, why do you bother watching it again? You know the ending." Like, like that's obviously, not why I always I know, watch a film. And, and you know, obviously, the first time you watch it, and then you get to the ending, and it's just like, okay, like that's an ending <laughs> to a film. And then people that aren't as into film will watch it again and be like, oh, "Yeah, it was a good film." I, you know, obviously, I know the endings, so whatever. Yeah. Whereas for me, every time, like it's building up to the ending, 
uh, again, for like the 2% of people that might be listening to this that haven't <laughs> watched it, not going to spoil it because I don't want to spoil that film for you either. Oh, come on. But, uh, <laughs> okay, please, for the okay, love, turn it off. Right. <laughs> the film's 100 years old. You can spoil it. All right, but. fine. He gets out. Yes. <laughs> mm-hmm. but, and very uh, cockily does not, or I, that's not very, I don't know, pompously, what is the word? Um, pompous? Assumes, mm-hmm. I don't know, just mistakenly assumes that Red is going to remember the name of that, remember that <laughs> name of that town I'm not going to write about in this letter? Yeah. I hope so, because I'm going to be waiting a long time on this uh, stupid beach if you don't. Yeah. But, you well, that, that and, yeah, no, no one <laughs> else is going to go and move some rocks mm-hmm. out of wall. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, yeah. it's not like the name of the town was Denver or something. He's just uh, like, say what, like, could you spell that out for me, yeah. please? <laughs> say what now, Aneo? I believe yeah. what's an A-ho, <laughs> say if what's I recall an correctly. Yeah. Uh, but, 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 yeah, I mean, he, even now, watching that film, and then it gets to the point where he's he's gone through the wall and he's waiting for the thunder so he can crack mm-hmm. that pipe. Mm-hmm. Every time, I just get that shiver. Mm-hmm. And I can never explain it to anyone. Terrible else. calculations <laughs> on what a half a mile is or a quarter of a mile is. It's like not even close if you yeah, listen no. to it. It's like called like 40 feet, which is like three miles. <laughs> no, I yeah. understand you're calling through shit. Any amount yeah. of it is terrible. But... <laughs> All right, I, the only... I, I do forgive that only because I'm going to assume that they're writing the character of Red as the not quite as educated man <laughs> of the time. Oh, okay. <laughs> but, granted, <laughs> not exactly. Like, how did that get through? Yeah, that, hopefully that is the explanation. I yeah. Don't know. Did, yeah, anything else on Apollo 13 for you? Well, I mean, just my viewpoint on it, I'm not a history buff. I know bits and pieces of American history. Mm-hmm. I know slightly more about English history. Mm-hmm. Um, annoyingly, the one thing that I could probably tell you most about with the most certainty in the history of the world is what happened just before and in World War II, mostly in Germany. Mm-hmm. Now, coming from England, living in America, not helpful in the slightest. But that's what not I can tell much, you. No. <laughs> nah. So I didn't, I didn't necessarily have the, oh my God, this is like, the big, some of the big historical moments, I still got that. You know, I still watched it thinking, like, you know, wow, this actually happened. We were up in space. Yeah. Like, oh, that. Maybe just, I just maybe didn't have the pull as you did to that. But, yeah, space, I've, I've always been interested in the, un- the universe, how the universe does or doesn't work, as it may <laughs> be. You never know. But, yeah, what, watching that film, I remember that again was one of those films where the acting was what drew me in. Just watching these people really becoming the the characters that they're playing. I mean, Tom Tom Hanks up in that spaceship, and you see the burden of leadership. You see yeah, the decisions you see he has to make. see him lose his cool at a point, and yeah. he's on the voice channel speakerphone. I guess we'd call it now. Yeah. But uh, yeah, he's on there, and he loses his yeah. shit. Just turn and it just, off. Yeah, and turns off. It takes off his medical sensors and. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you see them crack under this situation. It's... Yeah, I mean, it, like watching it, and you, you can think, like, you know, yeah, this this almost certainly is pretty much how it happened. I mean, obviously, they're not going to take too much of an artistic license with it, but just watching watching Tom Hanks, uh, Kevin Baker, yeah. uh, and everyone else. Lieutenant Dan. Uh, and... <laughs> yeah, the second pairing of Tom Hanks and Gary. Uh, second? Yeah, I think chronologically, yeah, I think but, second. Yeah. But, uh,. <laughs> But yeah, yeah I and mean, it's uh, it's just I really enjoyed watching it, just seeing the acting. I enjoyed watching it and being able to see almost a snapshot, as it were, of uh, America during that point. But yeah, that maybe because growing up in England, I watched it and saw some of like you know, the Cadillacs that they're driving around and stuff, and just thinking like, oh, they're going for Americana for this bit. Uh, yeah, so, uh, yeah. oh this is old 60s 70s America yeah. driving around or something and like the pastel colours but I I've, I didn't really give it too much of a forfeit for that because obviously that was mm. the style back then but I mean, maybe maybe I'd been too turned off by Greece that I was forced to see again and again <laughs> it's like you, know, you lost I, me okay yeah and, mm. and I am now sort of uh, okay I'm against the sort of pastel yeah. side of it but when, when you're when you're in space when you're in NASA and just mm-hmm. watching these people working and all that I mean yeah it's su- such a such a great film and definitely I would say more of a sort of go America type film than 
so let's say Independence Day, which is just a propaganda film for, for yes. America. <laughs> that was set up to do one thing: make a lot of money. And yeah. It did. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Whereas I would say this should be sort of the propaganda film for America. It's uh, yeah. they they've sent the people up into space. They had a problem, and everyone is just yeah. we're getting. I think, back. yeah, it's an important thing to know about. I believe if you're not like I certainly wasn't alive at that time. Yeah, but I think it's a important part part of that being a history buff stem from you need to know where you've been to know where you're going yeah. and as as a as a person as a culture as a society yeah we we need to yeah. we need to learn from history we can and, and as yeah at that time of the, those events it's it was only what about a year after the moon landing so space yeah. exploration other like landings you know it's still very very new and it wasn't, you know, they, they narrowly made it home. Yeah. <laughs> they narrowly made it back. There were many questions, you know, as to whether they were going to make it out of this situation. Yeah, and I but, mean, even on the descent as well, when it comes down to, do we trust a computer or do we well, trust is, is the, the heat one? shield going to hold? Yeah. They didn't know if that was damaged in the explosion. They didn't know if the parachutes were a block of ice. Yeah. <laughs> so they're going to smack into the water at 300 miles an hour. Yeah, so, but, uh, so many of those things of like, if this had gone differently... Would they have made it? it? And yeah, part of my point was like, if you haven't seen it or didn't know about that, um, it may not hold with younger viewers because I think that is kind of unthinkable now that that level of an emergency would take place in these yeah. times. Yeah, um, you know, with with the computers we have now, with what they were working with then, yeah, and just you know how I wouldn't I shouldn't use the word routine, but something like that should that's somewhat be routine, yeah. you know. Um, even though we haven't been back to the moon since the yeah. 70s. But uh, I don't know, you know, if, if the drama would hold for a younger yeah. viewer. But well, I would say, actually, thinking about what you just said, we're fairly lucky, like, I would say, sort of my generation, your generation, that, like, we've sort of bridged the gap between the older technologies dying out and the newer technologies coming in because the kids who are now, what, say, uh, 12, 13, or whatever, the people mm-hmm. who might start to see this film again mm. at some point it'll be showing on tv at christmas or whatever yeah <laughs> um, and like they'll watch it and just be like they'll look at the computer with the tape on it and be like what's that <laughs> like you know they'll have never seen anything yeah like well every 10 year old has an ipad now so yeah <laughs> don't get so, me started down that line so, uh, so it, i'll be my grandfather ranting and raving here <laughs> well i mean we're, we're at the point of like we we can still think back that far like even you know, we weren't born then, but it's not so far back. That no, it's like, it was, you know, it's <laughs> like, for me, I was watching that this this morning, and I thought, wow, this was 12 years, only 12 years before I was born. Yeah. <laughs> like, that really made me feel old, and it really made me feel <laughs> a little more connected to the events. Like, it wasn't that long ago till I was in the world. Yeah, um, and, it, and it's, uh, I can't remember where the quote I heard was, but it's like, everything that happens before you are 20 is uh, like every every sort of technology thing like before you are 20 and that includes like you know let's say 20 years in the past as well like that is the world that you grow into you know you will hear references to back then you might even see yes. pictures there. most of the music you listen to yeah. is going to be from that time exactly so then yeah. you've got 20 to 35 at that point that is you like you are now solidifying everything you might get some more whatever everything that happens after you are 30 after you are 35 no one cares. is against the status quo and, yeah. and, and no one cares about your opinion yeah. after that and unfortunately that means that the kids growing up now their sort of world that they're growing into is fast electronics and all of that stuff mm-hmm. and it, get, it gets to the point of like you know there, there's so much stuff going on right now for the young people that are not even thinking about going back and looking at where it's come from <laughs> which is what this film was doing some of the time I think it's like it was a look back at this almost horrific mm-hmm. tragedy yeah. <laughs> that occurred mm-hmm. and then them coming back it's a heroic story and you get the roundup at the end like you know pretty much it occurred in almost the middle of the space age, like the whole going into space. But yeah. uh, I've actually forgotten what I was going to say. <laughs> that's that's okay. No, that's a, you were kind of hit on this a little bit, but in the film and in real life, there was a press conference with the astronauts before the launch, mm-hmm. and they were asked, you know, why go? Like, that's a lot of things. With space exploration, that's a lot of people's question. Why waste these millions and billions of dollars to them wasting? You know, why go? 
and uh, Lovell's answer is, you know, imagine if Columbus or uh, after Columbus landed, if yeah. no one had returned in his place. You know, that, yeah. that, that that pretty much drives it home. Like, <laughs> we need to keep pursuing knowledge, and we need to discover. <laughs> yeah. It's part of our genes. It's it's in us to which, discover. Which is actually like why I was so excited when they were like, you know, we're going to send another rover to Mars. Yeah. yeah, the rover that is now scuttling around mm-hmm. on Mars. Like, yeah, you know, oh, we had that catastrophe of a crash, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, and then it, it wasn't. Well, we spent so much money on this, <laughs> give up. It was right. We need to do this again <laughs> like, because, because yeah, exactly that's why there are that. plans now. You know, for another finally lunar landing. <laughs> um, yeah, it's important to me personally. Like what the sacrifices those guys made and the risks they took at really not a perfected art at all at that time Uh, like you know just a few years before you know before there was you know a fire in the one of the the spacecraft and yeah uh, uh, grisham and white and i think chapman was his name uh, all died and uh, so they were you know they were experimental pilots and you know flying jets and stuff and yeah they were risking their life every time they got into (laughs) a craft and i will say uh, the film does a fantastic job of Reminding you, because obviously there was the tragic accident of the mm-hmm. of the men, and then later uh, Jim Lovell's son asked him if he knew yeah. the people in that accident. Like, so yeah, I knew him well. Yeah, towards the end of the film, they, they talk about a three minute blackout of radio communications when it's landing, and no one's ever gone past that three minutes. Yeah, and they go to like four minutes plus, and they show you know Marilyn Lovell, his wife, uh, holding their children, and a lot of people at the house watching and waiting to hear and you just see an expression on her face and that expression says how am I going to raise these kids alone yeah. but she <laughs> thinks her husband's dead <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> at that point and yeah it's just or even you know, just how am I going to tell them yeah exactly because yeah. they're going to be expecting to hear the voice <laughs> and it, it might yeah. not ever come yeah but yeah it's just fantastic drama <laughs> yeah and I um, I would say like for my, myself the rating I would give it on our scale I would say minus to myself just because like you know maybe maybe I wasn't quite old enough at the time to fully get everything uh, so it's not uh, not I got that pool with me and also because uh, yeah, I actually am going to blame having to watch Greece so many times for sort of taking me out of the Americana style <laughs> of, <laughs> like, so what are you supposed to do with a movie that takes place in 1970 not show it as 1970 <laughs> no, not no, put them in the, no, the I, colors I have, and I have the nothing wardrobe. against uh, yeah. like doing that Period pieces or whatever. Yeah. it's just that that one film has so put me off that style that mm-hmm. era <laughs> that I myself do not like that being shown too much because it just reminds me of that I don't want to say traumatic experience having to watch Grease all the time but it really was awful (laughs) but you know I I, I do not I do not want to take away from the film at all it is a fantastic film Um, as near a documentary as you are going to get (laughs) from Hollywood from from an adaptation uh, yeah I mean I I am glad that you know they didn't take as many liberties with it as they could have probably out of respect for (laughs) everything oh yeah yeah, yeah. (laughs) because you know if if it had been too much more of a a Hollywood read the book (laughs) yeah read the book or another great thing I was discussing earlier I believe before we started if you buy the DVD or Blu Ray, there is a commentary with Jim and Marilyn Lovell, which does shed a lot of light. I mean, she obviously gets to show her point of view a little more than the movie presents. Yeah, uh, it's all kind of implied or assumed, or yeah. you know. And he, uh, well, he corrects a lot of things throughout <laughs> watching the film, like all oh, that actually didn't happen, or that <laughs> happened out of order, or, you know, or, or something like that. But yeah. Uh, yeah, if you're interested in learning more about it, I might have to borrow that. <laughs> Not the book, I might, yeah, have to, or the DVD, which one? <laughs> so, I don't know if I have the book, yeah, I don't know if I can find it. It's probably packed away somewhere, but... Uh, yeah, so what so would you say rate? Bubba Gump, oh, oh, yes, yes, I didn't, uh, didn't give my rating. I would have to say very high, I'm going to go with minus 0.3, I think. Nice. Minus 0.3, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, given you said at the beginning, it encompasses most of the stuff that you're enthusiastic yeah, about. Yeah, exactly. So I, I am biased. I admit that bias. But uh, yeah. still, no, but I, still, I'm still looking good. through, you know, rose-colored lenses or whatever. I can still see it yeah. for what it is. I still think I'm looking at it accurately. Yeah. Obviously, <laughs> 355 million. There's something to it. Yeah. Um, 
and I don't want to, you know, put too much weight on that because obviously, <laughs> um, some things are just, you know, yeah. meant to make a lot of money. Titanic. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank you. But I guess that's all there is to say about that. To <laughs> yeah. quote another Tom Hanks movie. <laughs> all right. I think that's it for today. I believe so, sir. <laughs> all right. Well, just uh, got a couple of things to cover then. Um, we have a Facebook page. At the moment, it is very bland, as Lola was just uh, okay. trying to tell you there. <laughs> um, it's uh, facebook.com forward slash blokebusters. Uh, we also have a blog, um, a little bit more thought out than the Facebook <laughs> page at the moment, but still, you know, work in progress. I'm sure it will uh, get a bit bigger the more we go <laughs> on. Uh, that one's blokebusterspodcast.blogspot.com. Uh, if you want to email us at any point about anything, maybe even suggestions or films that you want us to talk about or would like us to talk about, uh, because uh, we can't guarantee that we will watch it, but no, still, no. Uh, it's blokebusterpodcast at well, gmail dot com. No s, yeah, yeah, no, no s on the blogspot. And uh, yeah, if you're listening to us through iTunes, then please rate, subscribe, yeah. <laughs> the whole nine. All yards. feedback, welcome, good and bad. Oh yeah, and if you're listening to us through the Hipcast thing, please now go onto iTunes and rate us. That would be very much appreciated as well. Absolutely. All right. So, if there's Signing off. Else, <laughs> all right, well, I'm Paul. And I'm Brian. And thank you very much for listening.